I'm Dr. Ward Bond, and I welcome you to the Dr. Ward Bond Show and the Life-Changing Wellness Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by PrimroseLeaf.com, a multi-use nutritional supplements for overall good health. Youth, beauty, longevity, PrimroseLeaf.com. Well, from singer to spirit warrior, Tara Natalie feels blessed to have found the connection between physical movement, mental stillness, and nutrition. This is her trifecta for success in all areas of life, and she puts all of this into practice as a yoga studio owner and teacher, a health coach, and a Karuna Reiki healer. Her greatest gift is helping her clients to go deeper, making shifts throughout body, mind, and spirit. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our very special guest today, Tara Natalie. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, yoga is so important. Uh, I think it's more important now than it was in the past. Well, I mean, it's always been important, but I think we're learning more and more about it. And I know that yeah. we're you and I are going to discuss the benefits of yoga for mental wellness because we're hearing a lot more about mental health in this day and age from people stuck at home during the pandemic going back to work and everybody is on a high level of stress and anxiety so what are these benefits of yoga for mental wellness yeah absolutely so yes i agree yoga has always been important but how incredible it is that people are now learning and really understanding the benefits of it uh when i started my yoga practice 20 years ago there was one studio every few towns um, and now there's a yoga studio, there could be two yoga studios in one town, you know, it's really picked up steam because people understand the benefits of it. And that makes me very happy. Uh, cause I always say the world would be a better place if everyone did just a little bit of yoga, right? It doesn't even have to be the full 60 minutes. It doesn't even have to be the fancy poses, you know, just the very basics of it really changes your connection with yourself. And then changes your ability to connect with other people, which is what really makes it so special. So how does yoga help us to connect with other people, which for me, and, and well, in my opinion, that that's very important when it comes to mental wellness, because a lot of people who deal with mental health issues, they feel like they're alone. They don't have enough sociability around them to, to me, that kind of kicks the brain into gear. Yeah, so yoga is a really interesting pro process in that every time you step onto the mat, you're able to make these tiny little shifts, right? And I think as adults, that is so special, right? When we're kids, we're constantly learning new things. We're constantly expanding our minds and learning, oh my gosh, today I could do this and tomorrow I was able to achieve this. And that's something that we do as children, but as we get older and we become adults, we stop studying, right? We stop being students and expanding our minds and growing. And that feeling of accomplishment is so powerful. And when you come to yoga class, typically, right? We start yoga and most of us walk onto the, into the yoga room. We have no idea what the teacher is talking about. What are those words she's speaking? What language is she speaking? He or she's speaking, right? Um, and where is this class going? So it's very scary when you can, when you first start your practice. And then every time you show up, you learn a little bit more, you get into a pose just a little bit deeper, your body opens in a new way that you just, you swore it would never be able to do. Well, right. And I, that, that's what, that's how sometimes I look at it. You know, my, my daughter does yoga. And so she'll show me a couple of poses that could be great for the lower back, for example. And, and I'm thinking, I can't reach my toes. But then when you said going deeper, sometimes it's stretching a little bit more and then eventually you can touch the toes and then you can touch the floor. Exactly. You know, exactly. And so, and that as an adult is such a fun feeling to have that feeling again. So that's one of the things that I love with my students, watching them have that experience, being able to come to me after class, and say, oh my gosh, I did my first push up today. I was able to hold my body for the first time. Or, oh my gosh, 
I was able to wrap my arm deeper today and I was able to, you know, drop down lower in this pose. And they're so excited. And then they take that positive feeling with them as they walk out the door. And now they're standing a little bit taller. They're just a little bit happier. Their confidence is boosted. And that's gonna affect the way that they interact with the rest of the people they see during the day. Oh, absolutely. Because for me, and I know definitely for you, it's it's like a, a little accomplishment. And when you have that little accomplishment, it goes a long way throughout the day. But it's also, I guess in, in, in yoga, it's almost like a building block. So you accomplish yeah. something that day, and like, wow. Then the next day, it's almost like you have a little bit more, um, oh man, what's it? I guess more self-esteem, uh, I guess, so to speak, more mm-hmm. inner strength. And you're like, yeah. I can do this. Yeah. And the body has muscle memory, of course, right? So once you've done something, now you show up for a few weeks in a row and you get that consistency. So that for me is one of the best mental pieces of the puzzle, right? Of yoga. But there are, of course, there are very scientific benefits of why yoga is so good for us, right? It's going to help to regulate our blood pressure. So a lot of people, we are running around in these high stress environments. Our little devices that we call our phones are constantly poking us, poking us, poking us throughout the day. Um, You know, so we need tools to help keep our blood pressure regulated. It's going to keep your heart beating at a more regular pace, which is going to lead to less cortisol levels in your body, right? We're all so stressed out. Half the time we're holding our breath. People forget to breathe. You know, it's something that happens automatically. But what we all do, as soon as we get stressed, what do we do? That's what people do, right? So when you're in the yoga room, you're breathing. Well, see, that's the thing. Two things that, you know, three things I should say. I always tell people, movement, movement, movement. The other one is breathing. I can literally catch myself not breathing or I'm breathing so shallow. You're wondering how the rest of your body's getting any oxygen at all. And you have to remind yourself. So I like to do breathing exercises. And the other one, of course, is always drinking water. So right now, let's say, you know, everybody's under stress and anxiety. They wake up in the morning, they're under stress. What can they do at home? Let's say a five minute yoga session. What would be something very easy for somebody to start their day and clear their mind? Absolutely. So also to be noted, right? When we talk about yoga, people often really focus on the poses, but our goal through our yoga practice is to prepare for meditation. Right. So really the idea is we're getting the body open so that you could sit in stillness without discomfort. Hmm. So that's good. Yeah, exactly. So in the morning, of course, we all know the body is so creaky when we first wake (laughs) up in the morning. We've got to oil up those joints, you know, and it's like you said, we've just got to move. That's the key, right? It's like sludge gets stuck in there while we're sleeping overnight. And then we got to get everything running. Um, So I absolutely, one of my favorite poses is half moon pose. Now, what is that? Can can you almost show us how, even just sitting here? Yeah, I can do it seated actually, which is amazing. And I actually recommend for people to do this pose at work. So it's a great pose that you can do at work in your desk. I'm like, so you could do it with me too. So we're gonna inhale the arms overhead. Interlace your 10 fingers and release your index finger. So it's like this, it's a little pistol grip. Okay. So we interlace the fingers and we cross the thumbs and we're gonna bring that up and over our head. And we're just gonna tick tock the body side to side. And then we'll do that a few times and then you're gonna hold in the center. And again, you can close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in. Get that nice length in your upper body and then start to tilt over to the right. Wow, I have to go right. <laughs> um, I know. Our reverse cameras. And then exactly. you're going to come back to center. Take a nice deep breath in. And move up and over to the left. So this is a beautiful opener for your rib cage, right? Especially in the morning. We want to get the rib cage open. We want to get those lungs expanding. So you take a nice deep breath in. We're stretching the whole side of your body out. 
go ahead and then you come back to center and we can take a backward bend. So we're gonna just gently cactus the arms. We call this cactus. It also looks like uh, football goals, right? Yeah. And we just lift the heart up and shift the gaze back. Wow. And let the heart space open, right? So we wanna, everything we do is so rounding. We're sitting at our computers, we're in the chairs. We need to do the opposite. We need to open and expand. I love that. That's so it's really easy. Uh, also, spine twists are really great to do in the morning. So you're just gonna, you could just take one hand to your knee and just twist gently. You could sit on the edge of your bed and do this, you know? Oh, Gentle yeah. twist. And then, of course, you know, the thing that everyone loses, like you already mentioned, is the touching of the toes. <laughs> everyone loses the touching of the toes. You know, so, I like the fact that the exercise gets people's arms above their head because most people never have that upper blood circulation, but more importantly, it's the lymphatic circulation that putting the arms over the head really improves. Mm -hmm. That way it pulls those toxins and gets them flowing out of the body. Absolutely. I love that. Love that. Wow. Tara, now let me yeah, see this. It's simple stuff. It is. I, I love it. And then the fact that we can start our day with just, even if it's just five minutes, I think it sets the tone for the day. Which, Absolutely. Well, it's making yourself important. Yeah. It's and making it brings, time for a little self-care. Oh, absolutely. Because it brings up my next question. What is your definition of happiness days? Oh, happiness days. <laughs> right. So, you know what? I think that it's so important to say that for me right now, right? It depends where you are in your life. And I think that as you as you start your life and as you grow and then you have a have a partner and then you have kids like it's always going to change what makes you happy right it's always going to change it's always going to evolve so it's important to notice that cuz i often find that one of the things that causes that unhappiness is that we're holding on to what used to be and we're kind of resisting the changes that happen so really embracing the changes helps you to create more happiness. So that's my number one tip. Um, but also I really, at this point in my life, I have two kids and a husband and a few businesses and life can get really, really busy. Uh, so for me, it's really about creating moments. Creating moments throughout your day. Because you know what? I could sit here and tell you that every single morning you should be blissful while you get your children ready for school and you're getting them breakfast and someone throws things on the floor and this one doesn't want to put their shoes on and you should just smile and make it fun and put some music on, you know, but it's not always realistic, right? That's right. not real life all the time. We all have deadlines and timelines and maybe someone woke up late and now we're scrambling and we're rushing and maybe you lose your cool. Because that's real, right? Yeah, that's it is gonna real. happen. That's gonna happen. So what I say is, yeah, that does happen. So if that happens, then I get in the car and I'll turn on what I know my daughter's favorite song is, right? And I'll go, let's shift the moment. Let's create a really special moment right now so that I can shift her out of maybe that negative state that she was in and create a really special moment and let that be the moment that you know stays with her. And that's what I try to do throughout my day. I try to find, get really, really clear on what truly makes you feel happy. And then you know, okay, so for me, yoga makes me happy, right? We know this. <laughs> yeah, yoga makes me happy. So I have to make time for yoga every day. Even if it's only 20 minutes, I have to make time for my yoga practice. Eating healthy makes me happy. It does. It just makes me happy because I love knowing that I'm nourishing my body. Having time with my kids makes me happy when I'm uninterrupted. Again, maybe not realistic for me to have my whole afternoon uninterrupted interrupted with them, but let me create a moment where I put my phone down and I know that the only thing I'm going to focus on is them. So really important, creating moments of that happiness throughout your day. I like that because especially, you know, if you have a spouse, you have kids and giving of yourself 
and bringing happiness to them, you're going to uh, reap those benefits as well. And, you know, as parents, it's tough. You know, you wake up in the morning and every day is going to be different. And it's either dragging them out of bed, trying to get them dressed, trying to get them out the door. But I like the fact that even if there was a little bit of chaos in the morning, but then when you get into the, the car to take them to school, you can take that moment and make it positive, make it happy before they get out and start their school day. So that is so important. And I think a lot of times, even as adults, we forget about that. Even if we're going to the office, we're going to go to work. I think even if we're driving to work by ourselves, we should create our own happiness moment before we start our actual day with colleagues, because I think it can go a long way, especially in the area Absolutely. of productivity. Absolutely. You know, I so mean, I love when I'm in the car, once I get the kids out of the car, I put on a podcast right? To listen to, to fill myself, or I'll put on positive affirmations and listen to affirmations while I'm driving so that I'm lighting myself up before I go out into the world. Yeah. I, I like that. Now I understand that, uh, you know, we all know that there's great benefits to working out now for you, you know, you're known as a top yoga teacher, but what are some of the types of workouts that you do to add to yoga or complement the yoga that you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I love my yoga practice, but I also love working out with trainers. I love the, um, the banter that I get when I go to the gym, right? So when you're in the yoga room, it's very quiet. Nobody's supposed to talk, you know, so it's, it's very, you know, it's very inward focused. Um, but at the gym, we're laughing, we're cheering each other on. And again, I love that boost that you get when you're there and you're all pushing each other, you're helping someone else, you're seeing, you know. So I really enjoy um, a little bit of weight training with a trainer. And I love where we are today, right? So I train for 30 minutes twice a week. Not a ton, yeah. right? Everything doesn't have to be this big, huge, massive commitment. Yeah, well, yeah, and so many people I know that are so gung-ho in the gym that if they miss a day, you know, their happiness day goes completely out the window. And, right. And I think that's more of a neurotransmitter situation, you know, especially with dopamine. And, Absolutely. You know, so I, and I think by doing different types of workouts, maybe it's weight training two days a week, maybe it's cardio two days a week, maybe it's, you know, yoga five, 10 minutes every day. Um, uh, because I think all of that, you know, I believe in being structured, but at the same time, not to go so far to one side, because then that's not really helping your mental health or providing mental wellness, which is I know Absolutely. That we're talking about today. I like well, you the have fact to be that, able to move around, right? Yeah. And, life know, is going to change. And <laughs> well, see, I find that yoga is great for mental health. Cause like you said, the first thing you're going to do is really just quiet yourself, you know, go put your cell phone on airplane mode, stick it in another room. So you're not tempted to, to grab it out of habit, which I think now that's become a problem with millions of people around the globe. We grab it for no reason, even Absolutely. if there's no notifications and we just need to have a space where there's no electromagnetic field, basically disrupting our mental flow and just even, you know, I think, you know, we have our own, you know, we have meridians in our body, which is almost like our internal algorithm, so to speak, and mm -hmm. we can disrupt that. And I think yoga puts us back to center, doesn't it? It does. It really helps to balance. And I think, like you said, I love the mo different uh, modalities. So, you know, I have a, I have a trampoline in my basement, a rebounder, which I love. And again, on a day where I can't get to the gym or I can't get to yoga, that shouldn't mean that my day becomes miserable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I have a rebounder. I have a 25 minute boot camp that I do with no weights, no equipment. The only thing that I need is the space the size of a yoga mat. That's it. So I can do that when I'm traveling. I can do that with my kids jumping around around me. You know what I mean? Because like you said, we have to be, we can't be so rigid on exactly what we need to do that when that doesn't happen, now our whole world gets flipped upside down. Right. You create your own mental health issue 
by being so almost so militant to your schedule. And and you know, I think when people find something that they really enjoy, especially it's some type of exercise, it can go too far. And you know, even when, even though I like to cycle every day, I'm not going to cycle seven days a week. I may cycle four to five times a week, but I've got, you know, I want some rest days to recover, but I may, but at the same time, it's more important to do something else and not to just ruin your whole day, but just because you didn't go to the gym and, and that yeah, happens, absolutely. You, know, it does. But, you know, because it's almost like you're creating, like I said, you're almost creating your own mental health issue when really you're wanting to exercise to improve your mental health overall. So, um, for you, how does being happy empower you? How does being happy empower me? Oh my goodness. In so many ways. Um, I, I love when people message me on social media and ask literally, are you really that happy? <laughs> right. But I wow. believe that part of my happiness is because I'm truly, truly doing what I love and I'm living my purpose. So when people are around me, whether it be on social media or in person, because I'm in my purpose, you can feel that happiness from me. But I love to share that I wasn't always like you said, when we started from singer to spirit warrior, right? My journey has been 20 years, you know, to get from a girl in college to a girl with a record deal who thought she was going to be a doctor, you know, and then now, and then to have to go to my parents who weren't necessarily supportive of me making the decision to become a singer, right? And to pursue my entertainment and all that side of things. And now to go to them and say, hey, by the way, yeah, I know you supported me while I did that, even though you didn't really want to. I'm actually not going to do it anymore because it's not making me happy anymore. Wow. Right? I'm going to go get certified as a yoga teacher. And there, everyone's like, huh? You know? <laughs> <laughs> we battled for so long for this. Um, and I think that goes back to exactly what I said in the beginning about the evolution of yourself, yeah. right? That true happiness comes in allowing yourself to evolve and don't be stuck because you said you were going to be this person. You're allowed to change. You're allowed to change your mind. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, that they feel like, well, this is what I've been called to do, but sometimes things don't work out and it's okay to do a 180, to change. I mean, I have interviewed so many recording artists and I and, and the stories are split 50-50. You have those whose parents were supportive. Then you have the other half saying, get a real job. And so I, I've seen both sides and it's very rare. And I've seen some where the career wasn't going where they wanted to go or maybe they had had a hit or two and it was great. But then they it kind of just dropped off. They got older, but they needed to find another job. They needed to support their family. And so they did certain things. And I think it's okay to, to change your mind. You know, you don't have to be stuck on everything. And like you said, the whole point is to live our life being happy. I would rather spend my life changing my mind and being happy than being depressed and miserable and stuck into something that I thought was what I was supposed to do my whole life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, because for you, get... you're a health coach. Now, yoga teacher, you know nutrition, you're a Karuna Reiki healer. Now, how did you, how do you combine the Karuna Reiki along with, let's say, yoga? Yeah, so Karuna Reiki, so Reiki is energy healing, right? So we go through different things, different experiences in our life different positive experiences, different negative experiences, and they get held in our body, right? And that's why, you know, there is the conversation of disease and illness, right? When we hold on to something and we're, you know, an, an unforgiving person, that's gonna have an effect on the way that your body 
is working. For the same reason that we talk about two cancer patients side by side having the same diagnosis and the same treatment, one having a really positive outlook and one having a really negative outlook, and it affects the treatment plan, right? So it's exactly. really important to clear your energy and to, to have that positive energy and to get rid of the junk yeah. that we accumulate over the years. So that's what I love about Reiki. I was totally, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I was, I don't wanna say I was against it, I was nervous about it, right? I didn't know enough about it. So it wasn't until a friend of mine that I trusted be became a Reiki healer that I said, okay, I'll try this. And then I tried it and I was hooked. Um, you know, I literally, before I went to sleep last night, was doing Reiki on myself before I went to bed. You know, um, we are these energetic beings. So we've got to keep the energy flowing. And that's that vibrancy. And that's why when someone walks into a room, you can see the energy that they bring with them. Right? Oh, so yeah. we want to make sure we have nice, bright energy. Well, you know, you bring up something so important. There is a lot of negative energy. There's a lot of people who do carry that around. And they, it's almost, you know, I always tell people, it's almost like being in a cage, but there's no lock on the cage. And a lot of people don't realize that they can walk out and be free from it. Mm. So it's, it's almost like a mental prison or... You're in a cage where all you're hearing is self lies. And, you know, we all have had life experiences in the past that are probably, they're not really positive. Okay. But some people, like you said, and I love the analogy of the two cancer patients because that is dead on. That happens every day. People are getting a bad diagnosis, but how are you going to handle the diagnosis? Are you going to speak something positive? Like I'm going to beat this or I'm going to make it. Are you going to sit there and go, oh no, I'm going to die. It, the words that come out of your mouth is your choice. Yeah. And, and I like the fact that we had that, you know, you're telling us that we can actually escape that we can be free from that. And, and even before bedtime, I think it's a good exercise to clear out maybe any type of negativity of the day before you go to sleep. So you're not carrying that energy because you're just going to have disrupted sleep if you don't really just kind of lay it down. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's so powerful. And it, I guess what makes me laugh about all of these tools is that they're available to us and people don't use them. Yeah, I know. And it's, and it's like people like you, people like me, that we have to take the time to educate. It's kind of like walking into a store and somebody's looking for something that could help them but they don't know what they're looking for and there's nobody in the store to lead them in the right direction. Mm. And education is so important. You know, I think when the light bulb goes off, I always tell people, it's kind of like you just received some revelation knowledge because now you're going to understand it. You've received it and now you're going to be able to use it and you could end up sharing it with somebody else. And I think that's where we're looking at when it comes to mental wellness. It's always being available to help other people and lead them in the right direction, especially for those of us that are positive. We are energetic. We do watch what we eat. We do some type of exercise to create movement. And then there are those that don't do any of those things. And their space, their body, is completely negative and polluted and those things need to be uh, cleared out and cleaned up yeah absolutely it gets stagnant right oh absolutely absolutely now where can all of my viewers learn more about you they can visit me in two places spiritwarriornation.com is my website so everything is there uh, I do private Reiki sessions virtually, which is something amazing that came out of, of quarantine. And it's equally as powerful and special. Uh, and then you can find me on social media at Tara Natalie. I share all about living a healthy life, living a healthy life with my family, li living a healthy life by myself um, and as a business owner. Well, so it's spiritwarriornation.com. 
Yeah. Wow. That's at the bottom of the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Please check out Tara Natalie. You've, you're going to learn so much. I mean, just think, just in our time today, we got to do some exercises and we really got our breathing going. We got the blood and the lymph moving today. And you could do the same thing if it's just starting out five minutes a day. But please go to Tara's website, Spirit Warrior Nation. I love that name, by the way, Spirit Warrior Nation. Man, Thank that sounds you. like one strong group of people. It's so beautiful. It's such a <laughs> gift to me to have it. Well, Tara, oh my goodness, many blessings to you, much success to you, and uh, please, you are welcome back anytime. Oh, Dr. Ward, thank you so much for having me. This was so fun talking about all my favorite things. Hey, and we created a happiness day, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and awesome. gentlemen, that is Tara Natalie. Go to spiritwarriornation.com, plug in. Check out what she's doing. Be a part of that community. Your life will change. A better mind, a better body, a better spirit. So I'm going to leave you with this. Remember to catch every episode of the Dr. Ward Bond Show, as well as Life Changing Wellness. Just hit subscribe on iTunes or Spotify for the Life Changing Wellness podcast. And if I can just ask you a simple favor, please take 30 seconds to rate the show on iTunes. I want to thank you for doing that for me as we want to bring you the best show possible. So just look up Dr. Ward Bond's life-changing wellness on any streaming service. You can learn more about me, of course, at drwardbond.com. So again, thank you for watching the Dr. Ward Bond Show and listening on Life-Changing Wellness Podcast as we are known as a different kind of wellness show. And remember, something spectacular happens when you treat your body right. Have a blessed day, everyone.